could you do this week that honors this philosophy? You need to change the way you perceive your flaws. Don't judge your sadness or depression, your feelings of unworthiness so quickly. Instead of feeling our guilt, jealousy, anger, fear and sadness as a terrible curse, see them as opportunities to grow. Realise that everyone struggles with these universal human emotions. We all feel insecure at times and that's perfectly okay. I remember how difficult it was for me to change the way I perceived my imperfection. Every time someone pointed out a flaw of mine or criticised me in any way, I'd feel depressed, angry and defensive. I am dyslexic and my husband corrects what I write. Out comes the red pen and I get very defensive. It really, in fact, it really annoys me. One day my partner said, instead of getting all sad and mopey, why not see this as an opportunity to grow? To be honest, I wanted to punch him right there and then. But after a few moments, I thought, what the hell, I'll give it a try. And what a humongous difference it made to my life. Instead of getting defensive, I would feel the sting to my ego, but another part of me would feel gratitude, gratitude for the chance to grow. So give this mindset trick a spin. See what happens when you start perceiving your imperfections as an opportunity to grow. See what happens when you challenge your inner, when you meet your inner challenges with gratitude. Critical and condemnatory self-judgment is the antithesis of self-love. The core reason we struggle so much with self-love in the first place is that we judge and reject ourselves. Don't get me wrong, self-judgment is not always a bad thing. We need to be able to measure up our ability to achieve certain tasks work, tasks that work, as well as understand our strengths and weaknesses to make smart, smart choices. But here's the thing. Self-judgment becomes toxic when it's used to negatively scrutinise, minimise, badmouth, shame or otherwise harm ourselves. Unfortunately, most of us are in the habit of doing this. Thanks to our conditioning as children, it is actually socially acceptable to give ourselves trouble because that is what everyone else has been doing for a long time. We have to learn the art of self-care. Most of us are terribly disconnected from our bodies, our minds, our hearts and souls. We live in a world that encourages us to be externally focused and outwardly driven. But learning how to love yourself is about going the opposite direction and taking some of your energy and directing it inwards. Spend time each day connecting with your physicality and explore what you need. Perhaps you are tired and need more sleep. Perhaps your muscles ache and you need to do some stretches. Or you might even need a good nutritious meal. These practices may seem simple, but they send a direct message and powerful message to your conscious and unconscious mind that you are worthy of being cared for. You need to be your own advocate and stand up for yourself. Which means being your own advocate means exploring what your needs are and respecting them. It's a form of self-love. What is non-negotiable or a deal breaker in your life? What are your deeply cherished values? What are your boundaries? We all have them. Stand up for what you believe in is a form of self-respect. In order to be your own advocate, you need to explore what is making you feel unhappy, depressed, or overwhelmed in your life? What lines are being crossed? In which areas do you feel used or taken for granted? What makes you feel unsafe? Remember that being assertive about your needs and values isn't a synonym for being obnoxious. You don't need to be loud, angry, or emotional, reactive to be an advocate for yourself. That approach will backfire very quickly. Instead, Healthy assertiveness is about honouring yourself while at the same time being respectful towards others. 
some mantras or affirmations that you might like to repeat yourself to practice healthy assertiveness include, I calmly and firmly honour my needs. I respect my needs in a gentle and assertive way. I allow myself to say no clearly and respectfully. I honour my needs, values and feelings always. I create clear and constant boundaries that protect me. I have the right to defend my needs and desires. You need to explore the core beliefs that keep you small. Evaluating your core beliefs, the main ones you have about yourself, can and will transform your life if you know how to do it properly. However, for the sake of clarity, I'll give you a few helpful examples of core beliefs. Common ones include, I'm bad, there's something wrong with me, I'm not worthy, I'm unlovable, I'm broken. There are many ways to uncover and change your core beliefs. One practice I have recently discovered is how powerful the use of a mirror can be. Stand in front of the mirror in your house and designate at least 10 minutes to stand alone, undisturbed with yourself. My first attempt, I managed three minutes only. When then, simply look at yourself, gaze into your eyes, what emotions and thoughts emerge. Mirror work is one of the most direct and dynamic ways of uncovering your self-talk and core beliefs. Pay attention to the inner dialogue that sounds like the following. I look ugly. This is stupid. Is something wrong with me? And notice what type of thoughts and feelings you keep having. Then enfold your body in a hug. Look at yourself and say, it's okay. I'm here for you. I accept you. Write about your experiences in your journal. But there is no singular path forward. Your job is to find your path. My advice to you when you find a step or a suggestion that excites you, experiment with, experiment with it. See if it opens you and makes you happy. If so, keep working with it. If not, let it go. Listen to the song from Frozen. Let it go. Today's two, year, two and three-year-olds sing and dance to this, which I think is a wondrous thing. Let your strong emotions be your guide. As you explore your inner self-love, you'll inevitably be faced with people who disagree, disapprove, or outright challenge your desire to make self-love a way of life. Here is how to see the bigger picture and prevent them from bringing you down. One big part of learning how to love yourself more is learning not to take it personally when others mistreat you. Ask yourself, how can a person who only knows conditional love give you unconditional love? That's like expecting a baby to climb a mountain. It doesn't happen. It can't help it happen. Therefore, what is the point of mourning the impossible? What is the point of getting wound up and unhappy over the people in your life who do not support you, but also speak against you? Their very actions speak of the abject lack of true love they have experienced, which is so sad. Most people do not only possess un unconditional love, but they are also caught up in the underworld of fear and pain. This fear and pain are both sourced from the illusion that they are separate from life, that they are humans having a life experience rather than life having a human experience. Once you realise that people are scared and in pain, it takes the, out the sting from their disappearing, disapproving stares and mistreatment of you. And it frees up the energy to provide yourself with more self-love. Once this realisation hits you, you stop reacting to their negativity and start feeling compassion for him, them. And it is this precise compassion that befuddles them and sometimes it is enough to motivate them to try the same path at you. Do you think that a person who mistreats you think that, that they think they're superior to you? More than not, the answer is a big fat no. They mistreat you because they are threatened by you in some way, shape or form. 
unless they are clinical narcissists or psychopaths. Most people are deeply insecure and fearful. The more you go against the grain, the more threatening you'll become. Understanding this and your ability to practice self-love will become much easier and clearer. As we said before, learning self-love isn't easy. Put it this way, throughout the day, you're confronted with many opportunities to disregard or tune to your feelings, to judge or honour them, to keep commitments and be responsible to yourself and to act in accordance with your needs, values and feelings. You have an opportunity to learn self-love all the time. Every time you talk yourself down, doubt yourself, exhaust yourself, dismiss your feelings or needs or act against your values, you undermine your self-esteem. The reverse is also true. You might as well make healthier choices because all you and all your relationships will benefit. Here are a few suggestions for valuing and appreciating yourself. Take a little time each day to be with your spiritual self. Do meditation, spiritual exercises, or contemplate the beauty in and around you. Allow yourself to awaken to more of the goodness that you are. Treat your body well, eat nourishing foods, drink plenty of water, exercise, walk, swim or dance. Get a good night's sleep, rest and breathe, eat deeply. Adopt healthy attitudes. Extend loving acceptance, compassion and empathy towards yourself and others. Be aware of and grateful for the blessings that you are and have to share. Be kind and tender to you. When you make a mistake, forgive yourself and learn from it. Make friends. Do not cut yourself off from others and hide away. Let the blessings that you are be known and shown. Every so often, take time to do absolutely nothing. Relax, switch off, unplug, stare into space, lie down and stretch out, even if it's just for a couple of minutes. Catch up with your greater self, recharge those batteries. Be grateful for the gift of your life. Treasure it. Treasure you. Truly, deep down, you are the wealth you seek. Wishing greater health, wealth and happiness in all of the ways it can come to you. I don't profess to know all the answers. I have been on this quest for years. I've experimented a hell of a lot with myself, worked through a lot of my own trauma and continue to do so with some delightful and surprising results. If I can, you can too. Remember, it is not your success that matters, but your significance. Reach out to me at margie at margieokane.com. I will be delighted to support you in your journey of significance. Again, thank you for listening. See you for the next in the series of A Blueprint for Life of Significance a guide to continuously recode your life. Maggie O'Kane, signing off.